Well, Madam Chair, I want to, or Madam President, I want to go back to what uh, Senator Thompson said earlier about us having our work done in the committees, and of course we know that's not true, and we have all the conference committee reports yet that we have to hear, and very little time left to hear them. But here we are spending um, spending a lot of time on this bill that that. Uh, is going to disenfranchise voters because if it's not going to disenfranchise voters, what I want to know is why are these 37 groups against it that <clears throat> include the Alexandra House for Battered Women, the Catholic Charities of St. Paul in Minneapolis, the Citizens for Election Integrity, the Jewish Community Action, the League of Rural Voters, the League of Women Voters, the Minnesota Consortium for Citizens with Disabilities, Minnesota Council of Nonprofits, Minnesota Indian Women's Resource Center, Minnesota State University Student Center Association, Minnesota Unitarian Universalist Social Justice Alliance, Native Vote Alliance in Minnesota, Older Women's League of Minnesota, Our Saviors Community Services, St. Stephen's Human Services, Twin Cities Jewish Community, YWCA. Those are just some of the organizations that are against this bill, and that includes an awful lot of people in those 37 organizations. So I do think that these groups would not sign on as being against this unless they really believe there was going to be voter disenfranchised, that voters are going to be disenfranchised. So I think that that, that is obviously a problem. And also, um, the cost of this bill is another problem, of course. We don't know where we're going to get the money to solve our budget problems right now. But in addition to um, the five million or so that this bill allocates, uh, Citizens for Election Integrity did um, did a, a study, and they I think they did a pretty good fiscal note on some of these issues, and uh, they came up with something else that's not included in this bill, and that's 19 and a half million that is estimated for voter education and outreach. So we're going to change the system here um, a year, year and a half before the next election, and 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 we're not going to have any money. Um, included in this bill for voter education, $19.5 million. And Missouri estimated that would cost $17.4 million in Missouri to educate their voters on the change. We're not, we don't have that going on here. <clears throat> the other thing is, is that we talk about integrity in the system. Well, Minnesota actually has uh, a system that has a lot of integrity. Um, North Dakota doesn't even ask for voter registration if we're going to start comparing states. But here's what we have in Minnesota. We have vo voter registration. We have a registration oath. We have verification of newly registered voters. We have a statewide voter database. We have postal verification cards. We also have Minnesota Department of Corrections data. We have an election day oath. We have transparency on election day. We have post-election review of voters, transparency after election day, and investigations by county attorneys. Those 11 things we currently have already to make sure that we have integrity in the system. So I think we need to get back to the work that we were sent here to do this session, and that is to resolve this $5 billion shortfall the final thing I want to say is that birth certificates has been mentioned as were 40, are $45. For those folks that don't have a driver's license and need to get a birth certificate to, to get a voter ID or don't have a marriage license, which is less than a birth certificate but still costs, $45 amounts to a poll tax. We're saying if you don't have that $45 to get a marriage license or a birth certificate, you don't have any other form of ID then you can't vote. Well, well. So, um, Madam President and members, this is a bad idea. Let's, uh, let's defeat it. Thanks.